Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Ari Views back with another video and today I will show you guys 15 amazing hidden features that you had on your iPhone this whole time and probably didn't even know about. Now before I get into these hidden features, I just want to ask you guys to go ahead and leave a like on this video as it does help my channel a lot. So let's get started with the first hidden feature. The first feature I'm about to show you guys is very cool and very useful as well. So let's say you have a phone number that you have copied from anywhere like notes or messages or somewhere on social media and you have that copied on the clipboard of your device. What you want to do is just head on to the spotlight search and you will see right here it shows you suggestions to message and call that number that you have copied on the clipboard. It also shows you from where you have copied that number. Now you don't need to go to the phone app to type the number or go to the messages and start a new iMessage. All you gotta do is from the spotlight search, just tap right there and you will be able to call these numbers that you have copied on the clipboard of your device. Now, if you don't see these suggestions on your spotlight search, make sure you go to settings and you go to Siri and search. And from here, just scroll down and go to phone and to iMessage. So here we have phone, you go to phone and iMessage and make sure you have these turned on so that Siri will be able to give you those suggestions. The default video player of iOS has some very useful features that probably a lot of you guys don't know about. So when you go to the default player, you see here we have two different buttons, 15 seconds forwards and 15 seconds backwards. But you can also speed up the video using those buttons. You don't just tap on them, you tap and hold and you will see now it will actually start speeding up the video and not just skip 15 seconds forwards or backwards. And right there at the top, you also have the volume indicator. So you can see as I turn up or down the volume of my device, it shows right there the volume of the video, of course. But what you can do with that is just tap on it and start right away changing the volume of your device. So that works, of course, as a volume HUD as well. So when here, all you gotta do is just tap on it. It will expand right here if you just tap and hold actually it will expand and of course you can go ahead and turn up or down the volume of your device you can also quickly mute a video so you're playing a video you don't have to reach for the buttons to quickly turn down the volume of the video all you gotta do is just tap on that right there you can see you can mute and unmute the video directly from here assistive touch is an amazing feature of ios which of course has been around for quite a few years. Most people use it as a home button if they have an iPhone with a broken home button or they just used to using assistive touch as a home button. But you can use it for a lot of different things as well. And one of them is launching apps even from the lock screen. So what you need to do is go to settings, go to accessibility, go to touch, go to assistive touch and enable it right here. And here we'll have custom actions. So you will have single tap, double tap and long press as well. You can pick whichever action you want. Now what you can do is head onto the shortcuts app and make sure you create a new shortcut, tap on add action. And from here, what you can do is tap on scripting and tap on open app and just choose any app that you want to open. And of course, save this shortcut with a name right here. So let's just go ahead and do that. And what you need to do next is head on to the settings, head on to one of the gestures like single tap or double tap and just scroll all the way down and here we'll have the shortcut section and you choose the shortcut that you just created. So here what I have set is I have single tap to open the calculator app and double tap to open Instagram. So you can see once I single tap there, it will open the calculator app. And even though I'm on the lock screen, it will do that as well. So let me just unlock the device. I need to unlock the device first. So of course, when you're facing your iPhone, it will unlock the iPhone automatically. You just tap right there and it goes straight from the lock screen into the app that you want to open and have set to open from here. Now, Apple is known for its amazing privacy features on iOS. And one of them can be found on Safari. If you're on Safari and you're on a website, there is using your microphone, you will notice right there at the top, there is a little red microphone that will pop up. That means that this website is actually using the microphone of your device. What you can do is just tap right there if you want to turn it off. So quickly from here, you can turn on 
or off the mic within a Safari website. Now, sometimes on iOS, getting to the most important settings is quite hard. You will have to dig through the settings app to do that. For example, location services. You want to turn it on, you will need to go to settings, go to privacy, go to location services, and then turn it on or off from here. But with iOS 14, I believe this is a feature that was first introduced on iOS 14.2. Now you can do that with Siri. So just ask Siri, turn location services on. And just like that, Siri will do that for you. Of course, it works turning it off as well. Turn off location services. And here it shows, of course, the button right there at the top, which lets you, of course, it shows you a description here of what it does if you just turn off location services and gives you the option right there directly to turn off the location services. Now, one thing that probably has happened to a lot of us is turning on the flashlight of the device from the lock screen by accident. So you tap right here and the flashlight will turn on on your device. What you can do is quickly turn it off by not just looking for the button on the lock screen, but just swipe like this. So all you gotta do is just do a little swipe and it will completely turn off the flashlight on your device. For any of the pictures that you have on the camera roll of your device, if you want to know more details regarding that picture, like the camera that it was taken with, anything like the details, exposure, anything like shooter speed, all that, you can do that from the Files app. And it is very simple. You go to a camera roll and just make sure you save this under the Files app. So save the files here and choose the location where you want to save. Now head on to that location from the Files app. And once you go there, all you gotta do is just 3D touch on that picture and then just choose here info. And you can see it will show a ton of different info regarding that picture. It shows here a button to show more and you will see everything that you need to know regarding that picture. Whether that was taken with your iPhone or another device, it still works. So it shows things, things like the size here, the date that it was created, modified and all that, resolution, di dimension, it shows the camera it was taken with, you can see here the lens model, and everything from the aperture to the focal length, all that will be right here, which is really, really cool. Now, again, it also works if you have pictures taken with other cameras, and it is pretty, pretty amazing. A very neat trick that you can do on the Mail app is have access to your drafts from anywhere on the Mail app. Doesn't matter where you are, as long as you see the new email button, all you gotta do is just tap and hold that button and then it will show you all the drafts you have saved. Now from here, it also gives you the option to actually start a new email or just make sure you go ahead and tap on one of the drafts and of course continue composing that email. One of my favorite features on iOS 14 is the new app library. It's very convenient, very easy to find apps. So on the app library, of course, you will have all the different folders, but most people probably don't wanna browse through different folders to find apps. The easy way is just to search from there. Now, once you're here, what you can do, once you wanna dismiss this page, is swipe up, it will take you back here, and then swipe up once more to go to the home screen. But another trick allows you to easily quickly go to the home screen. When you're here on the search or whatever you're doing on the search bar on the app library, just swipe like this and it will take you directly to the home screen. The next iPhone feature that was introduced with iPhone 11 and of course is on newer devices as well is a feature that of course I won't be able to actually demonstrate right now, but it's called audio zoom. I don't know if you have heard about this before, it basically zooms you as well when you're taking video. So you have an object that is maybe a person talking, you wanna zoom in on that and it will focus the audio on that object and will try to cancel out all the other objects that are around that object that you're shooting. That's very useful and of course, it's very convenient having that new feature, but unfortunately, it's not a feature that Apple can add by software. It is only available on the iPhone 11 and newer. 
When selecting text on iOS, you will have a few different methods which you can use to select text. But one of the easiest that I use the most is by double tapping and triple tapping. So here I have a bunch of things I have written for one of my previous videos. If I want to select one of the rows right, right here, all I gotta do is just double tap right there at the row that I want to select. If I want to select the last word on that row or that sentence, if I want to completely select the sentence, all I gotta do is triple tap right there and you can see as easy as that, it will actually go ahead and just select that text that I want and of course show up the menu right there. Now, a cool feature of iOS I know a lot of people love is the ability to actually turn your keyboard into a trackpad and just move the cursor anywhere you want. But this works anywhere on the screen. So right here you can see if I just tap and hold, you can see now it shows the cursor right there at my finger and I can just move it around and just place it anywhere I want as easy as that. Did you know that you can actually mark up PDF files on the Files app on iOS 14? So you have a PDF file, all you gotta do is just tap right there at the top and you will have the option here to mark up that file even though it is a PDF, not just a simple picture. And even add a signature if you have any of the signatures here saved or you can just add a new one of course, you can add that and place it anywhere you want on that PDF file. This is an amazing feature, very convenient of course and it will make your life easier just sign in anything you need, any PDF document directly from the files app. And last but not least is a setting that is hidden within the settings of your device and this is on all their iOS versions as well. So you go under accessibility, you go to motion and you enable reduce motion. I know a lot of people use this, basically it just disables the settings of iOS. But here's another setting called prefer crossfade transition. Now what this does, it enables some new animations on iOS. So now you will have that crossfade transition when opening and closing apps and of course when doing stuff like going to the, to the app library there, anything you do you will have this new awesome animation on your device. So that is it for this video guys, these are 15 hidden features that you will find on your iPhone and you probably didn't even know about. So thank you guys for watching, don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this, leave a like in this one if you enjoyed and I will see you guys on the next one.